Hi everyone and welcome back. This is another interesting topic. I mean, I cannot cover this in just a small video. This is all about how to secure your APIs. This is this video is a part of how to become a ninja developer and I'm talking about API security. I will talk about some generic uh, generic terms because if I talk about this in the land then it can be just like very big video, right? And I need to talk about all different protocols, examples and all. So I will just talk a little bit on theoretical aspects and will try to explain you as much as possible. So how to secure your APIs? First of all, your APIs are not public there may be some public APIs which are uh, open to the world but you need to then put the rate limiting on top of that API so that nobody is sniffing and just sending thousands of the request because that API is public right the most important point here is very basic is cross origin resource sharing there is a NPA module for it what it tells you, it what it tells you your APIs is just send these cross origin resource sharing headers only for a particular UI app. So only that particular UI app or the local host port can only access this particular uh, these particular APIs. Otherwise, if uh, somebody is trying to steal the APIs and try to use their on their application or production application, it should give the cross or the cross origin resource sharing because my server won't be sending the cross origin headers for the the other attacker website only it will be sending the the cross origin headers only for my application which is running on example.com domain and this security is only for the browser because still your apis are often uh, this cross uh, origin resource sharing applies only to the browser level security browser will not allow you but somebody has the url they can try to hit this from the postman or rest api clients it is still accessible because there there is no pitch there is nothing like a browser in that case so but still it is adding some kind of a security so you will be sending the cross origin headers only for your front end domain rest all will be blocked the, all the get put post patch requests will be blocked so they won't be able to render or access your apis because your browser will throw these cross origin errors another important module for the security is the helmet so you might have heard about this you can use it to enable lots of things on your express app helmet npm it provides uh, lots of uh, features so i will talk about this helmet i think is this is the one so you can enable only app.use helmet that that is how you will in uh, you will introduce this middleware to the express app this is how we do it app.use and middleware function app.use helmet app.use body parser cookie parser helmet and all simple express app so what all it is providing if you read these in depth what content security policy right it will it is just like a powerful to allow i mean you can just return a custom uh, security policy these are nothing but the headers you are sending from the apis which will disable uh, anyone uh, stealing your website in an iframe or try to add some uh, additional script all those things can be added through this custom csp policy so what is content security policy you can just read it in on the mdn these are like some kind of a headers which you are going to return from the server then cross origin resource policy it allows the others from loading the resources on the cross origin because you are loading it from the x domain to the y domain so we can only allow a particular domain to render these apis or access these apis rest all will be blocked referer policies strict transport uh, security uh, using https and then all these mime sniffing uh, click jacking and domain policies are expired by hide headers can be disabled using helmet so you can actually specify all the directives for the csp policy content security policy using helmet so here you can specify all the options for csp similarly i think i can talk about like this x download options so i think it is going to add this x download options and x powered by it will disable this uh, powered by header which is being sent by the express application so all these things you can configure on the uh using the helmet module so content security policies these are the default security policy will be added right mdn has a nice documentation on security policy what is default src and how we are creating these content security policy directives style source 
you cannot inject any additional or external styles script source it is just only a scripts which are coming from the self for example.com no any other styles or scripts can't can't be injected okay so this is what helmet does now next thing is authentication and authorization your apis are not public then they might be require some authentication authentication can be done in different ways you might be doing authentication based on the cook managing the session on the cookies or express based session because express provides the the session using you can just use app dot use uh, i can talk about that express session So here is the official express sessions and this is how we manage the sessions on the express application you can see so once you log in you can actually return the session id and then once the request is coming you can validate if the session id is created by this secret or not okay so you can just use express sessions or you can just uh, create some random token and you can just return that token inside a cookies and that valid cookies with expiry will be required when you want to access your api so oh, you can just use a token based authentication some kind of authentication mechanism needs to be there once user is doing login currently to in today's world for the authentication there are n different solutions available two factor authentication and now there is a passwordless authentication and there are authentication providers we are using oauth right key clock uh, open id connect uh, auth zero and these social providers uh, like google twitter facebook and all they are also using auth authentication is that okay you are auth auth authenticated they will give you token either session id or uh, some kind of a cookies or some kind of a SA jwt token that jwt token you will be sending back either in the header either in the cookies or maybe in some uh, x api headers so authorization is authentication is once you receive that token or a session id or a cookies you will validate that that particular cookie is generated from the server itself which it is receiving back and then authorization is once you are and once you have entered in the api system you should be allowed or restricted to a particular resources so that is authorization you can access the users get api put api but you cannot access users delete api so that is authorization based on the role also we can check that you can do this you cannot you can do that then sessions how we manage the sessions we can just talk about express sessions so you can just use simple express session once you log in you can just return a session id or you can use a jwt token based authentication so you can use the json web token or uh, any kind of a library or you can use this external client like auth0 to return like auth0 is just a client side you will configure the client id and you will just receive the token at the client side and then you will send that token to the apis and the apis will validate the token against auth0 so these are different mechanisms we i have used express uh, based sessions or cookies based and uh, then we mostly use now token based authentication all the external providers like auth and uh, all these uh, modern providers uses this token based stateless stateless authentication and uh, how we are protecting the apis we always check okay these apis should be accessible only if user is authenticated user is passing these uh, jwt tokens or session id in the authorization headers or somehow they are sending it then rate limiting is the feature because if your apis are even private or protected nobody should be hitting too many requests right like thousand requests per seconds which we are not even allowing so we can just add a rate limiting you can also add a rate limit uh, middleware on your express app that will protect your apis from the ddos attack somebody is trying to attack and steal some information like hitting thousands of requests and trying to brute force so that will be prevented we can use these for the gateways like aws api gateway azure gateways they they are feature rich on these things like securing the your apis or doing the rate limit and all those things are available there and allowing a custom uh, allowing the con different content type or restricting a content type and allowing a particular payload size all these things are available at the gateways and when you do the logout always make sure that you are actually invalidating the token invalidating the session at the server side also it's not like okay you clear out the the tokens from the local storage or from the cookies 
and from the session redux store in the react no when you are lo doing a logout you should clear out the session at the server side if the you are generating the token then you should expire it now the the important question is how can you expire a jwt token because that is stateless if the token is stateless you are just generating it and just giving it then the token is valid till it is it gets expired there is no way to expire it so what you can do is you can store the state of each and every token which you are generating and when you do the logout you just mark that token expired in the database so it won't be available till uh, like next 24 hours till it expired because user has already done the logout so we need to expire the token and when you are returning a session like you are using cookie based authentication then you should return the cookies using http only so they should not be able to access at the client side and you should be having the https uh, transport level security and you should not expose your swagger docs swagger docs is only for internal teams so your swagger docs should also be protected by some basic authentication mechanism username password and uh, you should not expose your api keys and uh, after some time you can also rotate your api keys so that because api keys are something which your apis are using to access the database to access a particular third party clients and all so these are some of the security measures which you should adopt while building the apis and you can make your apis uh, like production ready and totally secure.